Does the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, or was that for the apostles? Everyone I talk to believes they have been led by the Holy Spirit. How can we all be guided into all truth when, we be, when what we believe to be the truth is drastically different? So, a good question. Get John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. And I'm going to read the question one more time. Does the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, or was that for the apostles? Everyone I talk to believes they have been led by the Holy Spirit. How can we all be guided into all truth when what we believe the truth to be is drastically different? John 16, 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now, clearly in John 16, 13, the Holy Spirit leads into all truth, but we realize that John 16 is under the kingdom program, right? John 16 pertains to the Lord's earthly ministry. So, is it the same today? Does the Holy Spirit today lead us into truth? Get 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2, 10. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So what is necessary for a man to know the things of God? You have to have the Holy Spirit, which is why the wisest men on earth in worldly terms, the ones that have the highest IQs, the most intelligence, the most education, you, you can have all worldly knowledge, and if you do not possess the Holy Spirit, then you have zero knowledge of the things of God, because it's the Spirit of God that gives such knowledge. Verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. It's only the Spirit of God that can tell you the things of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. What that's saying is the spirit of God is what enables us to know the things of God. Now notice verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. So does the Holy Ghost teach today? Yes, he does, according to that verse. But then what does it say? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Some have the idea, the way they get to spiritual truth is I get in my canoe and I paddle out into the middle of the pond when it's quiet and God just tells me things. And that's how I know the things of God, because the Holy Spirit speaks them to me. Well, that's not the sense of 1 Corinthians 2 at all. What it specifically talks about is comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Well, how do you do that? It's from the study of the Word of God. Look with me at Isaiah 28, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. The way that the Scripture works is it's different from an encyclopedia. If, uh, do you, does anyone ever remember having to do a book report and you had to do a book report on 
the Civil War or Abraham Lincoln or Declaration of Independence or whatever. And I can remember having an encyclopedia. And you pull a volume off the shelf and you turn to an article or an entry in it and it gives you a complete treatment of that subject. Does the Word of God work that way? Is there a chapter devoted to the rapture? Or is it that to understand the rapture, you have to look at a whole bunch of different places? You need to look at 1 Corinthians 15, and then you need to look at 1 Thessalonians 4, and there's other places you have to look as well. And my point is, the way God has designed His Word is you have to compare spiritual things with spiritual. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Get with me 2 Timothy 3.16. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. According to those verses, the reason Scripture is given, the, the, the first purpose is doctrine. So if you're going to learn spiritual truth, where do you learn it? You learn it from the Word of God. Get with me 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1 verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. What event is that a reference to? It's the Mount of Transfiguration. And so when you think about the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord is present, Peter is present, James and John are present. Not all of the twelve are present at it. In those verses, verse 16, Peter says he was an eyewitness of his majesty. So he was an eyewitness at this very extraordinary event. Now notice verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Why is a written document more sure than an experience? Can your memory fade? Can you misperceive things? Of course. If you had to have your choice between seeing something and have a written record of what took place, the written record is far more reliable and far more enduring. We have also a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scriptures is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. When people think that the Holy Spirit speaks to them today, well, that's an experience, right? Well, there's something that is more sure than that, and it is the written Word of God. So to answer the question, it is true that many think that the Holy Spirit leads them into truth, but the authority is not our thoughts, and it's not our experiences. Our authority is the written Word of God. And the reason why there is so much confusion in the church and why there's so much disagreement is because there is a failure to adhere to the written Word of God. And that's why uh, there was a well-known book written many years ago called Why So Many Churches. And the short answer to why so many churches is because Christendom has failed to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And if Christendom as a group would rightly divide the Word of Truth, there wouldn't be so much disunity as there is.